Claus beard. <laughs> and I, I was going to ask you a Claus. question, but I prefer to you just to rip apart Joe's answer, which was horrible. <laughs> We're all products of our environment. That means that everybody from one environment would end up in jail. No, that's not, well, that's not what I'm saying. You say they're products of the environment. That means if we all had similar environments, we would end up in the same place. Well, I'm, don't you think that most criminals come from the same no, environment? No, I think they're bad people. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? You wouldn't say that most criminals come from no, inner Joe city and low right economic most of environments? Most come from single mothers. Yeah. Oh, really? All right. Mm -hmm. All right, single mothers. That's all true. The single <laughs> Thank you. See, we can agree on things. <laughs> yeah. You know. And I think you'll agree on my other point, which is why this leads to my conclusion. Once you've committed a violent crime, let's say, I say death penalty. <laughs> why do we waste time with the prisons? I would give... Yeah. This party won't agree with. I'll give Chuck Colson one year of prison ministries. If you can turn him into a Christian, they can go. Otherwise, death. Mm, wow. Just no, Christian, though? No other religion? What, like Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> well, like an actual religion. Judaism, yeah. Buddhism, there's a lot of yeah, psychology, maybe. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea. Uh, Wiccan, children of God. Conservative pundit Ann Coulter went on Fox to pronounce this about ungrateful Canadians. They need us. They better hope the United States doesn't roll over one night and crush them. It's Explain... We were Why on Canada said that, Council that discussing the, the anti-war protesters. Yeah. Canada used to be one of our most lo most loyal friends and vice versa. I mean, Canada sent troops to Vietnam. Was Vietnam less containable and more of a threat no, actually, than Canada Vietnam, did not say? send troops to Vietnam. I don't think that's right. Canada did not send troops to Vietnam. Indochina? No. no. Canada, Second World War, of course. Korea? Yes. I Vietnam. think you're wrong. No, it took a pass on Vietnam. I think you're wrong. No, Australia was there, not Canada. I think Canada sent troops. Well, I'll get back to you on it. <laughs> okay. Coulter never got back to us. But for the record, like Iraq, Canada sent no troops to Vietnam. Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. And Coulter's new book, Godless, the Church of Liberalism, has caused yet another controversy. This time it's what she says about America's public schools. On page 169, Coulter says, most public schools are at best expensive babysitting arrangements. At worst, they are criminal training labs where teachers sexually abuse the children between drinking binges and acts of grand larceny. Joining us now, the author of Godless and those fine words, Ann Coulter. Also joining us, uh, Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor, uh, Kirsten Powers. You know, Ann, I've been wrong about you. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I've been set straight by Megan Daum of the LA Times, by Lee Salem of Universal Press Syndicate who defends you, who says this is just trenchant satire, and that I have you all wrong. This is just a brilliant satire. The things you say, the things you write, when you say Tim McVeigh should have bombed the Times building, we should carpet bomb them to convert them to Christianity, when fragging is why we invented John Murtha. I should be well, laughing at this. this is, these are old jokes. <laughs> these are laughable, happy but I like satire. That. <laughs> right? I like that, that fragging is why we invented John Murtha. <laughs> oh, you like that. You one. say, I'm even going to give you material now, because I realize this is all comedic satire, and that you're actually a liberal who's doing this to mock and parody the way conservatives think. <laughs> well, it's not working very well, if, if that were my goal. I think that's No, I think the Timothy McVeigh line was merely prescient after the New York Times um, has leapt beyond... Um, beyond nonsense straight into treason Oh, so, so there week. you go again, once again reaffirming that we should bomb the New York Times. Isn't that, Kirsten, <laughs> you've got to admit, this is Precious. great humor. This belongs on Saturday Night Live. It belongs on The Daily Show. Well, look, I mean, I, I read, I read the, the chapter that we're discussing tonight, and I have to say, I have to give it to Anne. I mean, she can turn a phrase. She knows yeah. how to get attention. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And the, the issues that she brought up, she, I, unfortunately, I have to disagree with you on Anne's behalf, and I think she is serious. Oh, you do? <laughs> um, yeah. You and, uh, and, I think, and I think if you, you know, if you read the chapter, she lays out all her reasons that, that, she, that she feels this way and that the, the, the uh, teachers are apparently living the high life on their $40,000 a year. No, no sane you, person would believe have, those things. You have missed the boat, Alan. Yeah. If you could, no if were a teacher, person. you would have really person. been living it up. Let's uh -huh. go to this point. Are public schools failing our children? Yes, I are think they, they are. Are they yeah. expensive I mean, babysitting I arrangements? I, I don't disagree that there are problems in the schools, and I think that there is a problem with the Democratic Party being too beholden to the teachers' unions. Wow. Where I do I'm have impressed. a problem, and what I think is interesting about Ann's chapter, mm -hmm. is that there seems to be this area carved out by Republicans. It's the only place in the universe where the capitalist system does not apply, which means when you say, let's pay them more money, 
and says, no, you don't pay them more money because that's not going to change anything. No, whole, that's but in the, everything, that's every true. other area of our society, the whole, we attract good people by the, paying them more. But that's what vouchers and choice are about. Because if you have uh, the, uh, 370 billion competitive dollars and you're competing for the students, the best schools with the best reputations and the best educational opportunities will win. Uh, and I, I want to ask you a more uh, as important a question because we had this Supreme Court decision today. Uh, your background is in constitutional law. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this because I think it's a dreadful decision. Um, yes, and I haven't read the decision. In fact, I think it's a violation of the Geneva Accords to have to read the entire decision. Um, so I don't intend to, but, but the idea of applying the Geneva Convention to um, to, to these savages uh, who do, do not abide by the laws of war. Um, I saw, heard earlier in your panel someone defending the decision saying um, the president is subject to checks and balances even in the conduct of the war. Well, n not entirely. He is the only man the Constitution gives the commander-in-chief powers to. Um, and you're not going to have checks and balances on determining troop movements or um, secret attacks and um, whether to use a daisy cutter or or a different sort of weapon for that for for a war you do need instant um, um, aggressive um, decisive well, action more that, that power is given to the commander-in-chief and I think he should ignore the Supreme Court ruling well that. That you, tells you, you what believe the everything in this book or you believe everything in the book and you put some things in there just to cater to your base um, no, of course I believe everything. Right. On the 9-11 wind widows, and in particular a group that had been acting critical of the administration, these self-obsessed women seemed genuinely unaware that 9-11 was an attack on our nation and acted as if the terrorist attack only happened to them. They believed the entire country was required to marinate in their exquisite personal agony. Apparently, denouncing Bush was an important part of their closure process, and this part is, is the part I really need to talk to you about. These broads are millionaires, lionized on TV and in articles about them, reveling in their status as celebrities and stalked by grief Arazis. I've never seen people enjoying their husband's death so much. Yes. Because they dare to speak out? To speak out using the fact that they're widows. This is the left's doctrine of infallibility. If they have a point to make about the 9-11 Commission, about how to fight the war on terrorism, how about sending in somebody we're allowed to respond to? No, no, no. We always have to respond to someone who just had a family member die. But aren't they the people because then if in the we middle respond, of the story? oh, you're questioning their authenticity. No, so the grieve, story but is grieve quietly. No, the story is an attack on the nation. And by the that way, that requires a foreign policy response. And that by does the way, not entail they also criticize the, the Clinton administration for their. Failures leading oh, up to not, not the ones I'm talking about. No, no, they have. no, no, no. They oh, have. no, 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 But no, is no. your message to them? No, no, no. Just they were cutting commercials for Kerry. They were using their grief in order to make a political so point while preventing anyone from if responding. If you lose a husband, you no longer have the, the right to have a political point of view? No, but don't use the fact that you lost a husband as the basis for your being able to talk about it while preventing people from responding. But Let Matt Lauer make the point. Let Bill Clinton make the point. Don't put up someone, I'm not allowed to respond. To without questioning the authenticity well, but of the apparently you are allowed and to this, respond to them. Well, yeah, I did. Right, so in other words... But that is the they, point and, and of they, liberal infallibility, of putting up Cindy Sheehan, of putting out these widows, of putting up Joe Wilson. No, 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 you can't respond. It's their doctrine of infallibility. Well, what I'm saying Have is they, somebody else make the argument I'm then. saying is I don't think they've ever told you you can't respond. So why can't they well, make you're getting point? testy with no, me. No, no, I'm just... I think, oh. it's a, I think it's a dramatic statement. <laughs> these broads... You know, are, are millionaires yeah, stalked by great ferocity? I've them. never seen people enjoying their husband's death so mm -hmm. much. They're, they're, yes, they're all over the news. The book is called Godless, The Church of Liberalism, Ann Coulter. Always fun to